Good afternoon, everyone. Today I have something unusual and timely to talk about the blend of physical metals and the blockchain. I know you might say that, can you do that? Absolutely, yes, you can. Today, Barnaby Anderson from cleangold.io. He and I, you know, we've had a chance to talk well, since 2017, we've known each other, and we sort of speak the same language to try to explain exactly how this operates where you can go into a physical gold mine that they own, put the gold onto the blockchain, buy the, the digital certificates for that, and then claim or redeem your ownership. So we're gonna walk you through a few things here. I think it's a great way and a timely combination between blockchain and cryptocurrency, which is running everywhere. You keep hearing more and more about it, but you're also seeing the, the metals run and you're seeing more and more about that. And it's just these two succinctly dovetail together. So Barnaby, thanks for joining me. Thanks so much, Dave. It's a real pleasure to be here. And it's been great watching your channel all these years. And you've certainly been informing me about what's been coming. There's a great opportunity for a lot of things, but just, I don't know what you feel. Like you look around the world, what do you see right now? Like strangeness or just maybe I didn't notice it before. I'm not sure. You were telling me all about this back then, uh, a grand solar minimum perspective. And, uh, but there's a reason why I left Australia uh, at the beginning of 2013 and I'd spent the previous three years getting ready to leave uh, so from actually, I sort of woke up to issues in Australia as a potential, you know, crackdown state back in 1999 before the millennium. And so basically I took me, I had to finish raising my daughter, you know, she's um, almost 25 now next, uh, next month. It took me 30 odd years to get, to get myself together and get out of Australia, uh, downsize my life. And that was all because I, I had a strong sense that I need to travel the world and see the world before it was gone. I kid you not, man, that's what I did. I just, uh, until the lockdown happened, I'd spent seven years, you know, just all over Asia, Europe, North America, man, it was great. But I was doing it because I knew that I probably wouldn't be able to in the future. And uh, I basically knew that my time was running out and maybe I should have done something different. Maybe I should have settled down and got some land, but I, I decided to, you know, sow my seeds and make connections like with you and John. And I felt that um, a bigger purpose was to connect with people around the world. And that from that, I would, I would, it would be clear when the right time was to stop. And I had this sort of premonition that North America would be the place for some reason to stop. I don't know why. I just had this sense that, and uh, with my girlfriend being Mexican and I spent about half each year in Mexico since 2014, I just had a sense that, it, that Mexico would be potentially a good place uh, and uh, the strong, a large amount of food, um, you know, et cetera. Like they, they may produce so much food, they export it to the US. And, uh, but I was always thinking in the back of my head, where is it going to be good to, to stop? Because, uh, you know, when the, when the music stops, where, where do you sit? <laughs> and uh, uh, so that's kind of, that's where I, so I, when you asked me, like I, I had a sense that, I wanted to play out my life and basically if, if it was going to come to an end where I could say, hey, I really lived and I did a lot of stuff, cool stuff. But I also wanted to figure out when I could make a difference. You know, I was really like, well, hang on, given what's going to go down, I'm not sure exactly what's going to go down, but I want to be prepped to make some kind of difference. And that's when I really got into, into crypto and my whole background in tech. I was like, okay, so let's see if we can make a difference here. And, and so, yeah, but when you ask me what, what's my sense of what's going on, that's my sense. And uh, I, I feel for people, obviously I have a lot of family and friends back in Australia and I'm concerned about what's going on for them big time. Nobody can get in or out of that country right now, really. Yeah, Taiwan's locked down so, completely as well. You know, you see it and I'm, I'm appalled or just like shocked at what's happening in Australia, just how quickly they're like, all right, where you, where you slept last night is where you need to stay for the next six weeks. Like what, is it, you know, and, um, you know, here it's, it's lightened up a bit in some places, like luckily in the Southeast U S it's really very hands off and light. And there's still people walking around without masks, even in stores, but you go to other places, you know, you get ganged up by 20, 30 people if you don't have a mask on. So it's quite, you know, just like hodgepodge hit or miss on the draconianness or the, the, the self care in police squads out in the supermarkets. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's uh, the, the U.S. is definitely a mixed bag. Australia is much more uniform. Um, Me Mexico, uh, to be honest, I, I do feel a lot of freedom here. 
And so, uh, and I felt more confident about everything that we're doing uh, with the, the new, with the gold platform, with the clean gold. I felt very confident about launching that from, from being in Mexico. That's, I guess, how I, how I chose this spot. Yeah, so what are you thinking about the, you know, since the mines are over in Australia, how do you think the lockdown, I know it's so far out, it's so far, you know, removed from the bigger cities and even the metropolitan cosmopolitan areas, but what do you think about the gold mining areas itself being affected by this whole COVID lockdown thing? Well, because it's in uh, Western Australia, uh, close to Perth, there, I get a lot of first-hand reports uh, from her, I've got another close friend who's just moved over to Perth. They got there before, obviously, before the lockdown. And uh, and obviously, there's the whole mining team there. And they all tell me the same story, that there's basically no cases, that the border is completely closed. Nobody in Australia is allowed is allowed into Western Australia at all. So they think basically, they're having a good time. That's what they tell me. They're able to walk around, no masks, as far as I gather. It seems very stable very secure, you know, people having a, you know, essentially a good quality of life over there. And so I feel very confident. Uh, and the mining team is telling me that they don't have any issues getting out there transport wise. People can travel out to the desert, go to the mines, etc. That's sounding good. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. You know, where there's no civil chaos going on, where operations continue to run unimpeded, because that's what's happening here in the States. You start to look at the supply chain breakdowns, and food, you know, I don't think people quite understand is this pushing everything to such an extreme uh, to close down highways. And now, you know, truckers don't want to go into some of these cities and insurers won't insure the truckers going into these cities. So they're creating their own sort of self blockade, if you will. It's just a different kind. It's not like putting up the wall and making the ring around it and waiting for eight or nine months like they did in the old days, besieging a city. Uh, they're doing it to themselves and just everybody won't deliver anymore. So they're creating their own don't deliver zone, which is same, same, but different. I mean, I'm sure they could get some Amazon deliveries in there maybe, but Amazon drivers didn't want to go into a lot of these places either. So now, you know, one of the most interesting things up in Minneapolis is, uh, you know, all these grocery stores are suddenly starting to close and they're, they're saying it's for renovations, but not what I've heard with the insurers not insuring the the cargo going in. They're just not able to get enough food to even keep a supermarket stocked at all. So they're closing it instead of letting the cat out of the bag that, you know what, truckers aren't delivering anymore. And this is creating its own supply chain outside the supply chain. It's layers of supply chain shortage. So what do you do when your food stops rolling into a country? I don't know, or a county or a city. Same. It's just different on different scales, you know? I mean, how, how after those people in the middle of a, an impoverished area where the food stops coming in, that are they going to be able to move and then go drive 35 or 40 miles to go to a supermarket to go get their food to bring it back? I know that's what we, um, there's been supply chain issues everywhere. That's, that's really what we even saw with the precious metals, right? So that's why there's been a, a breakdown um, around a lot of the world, like even with the major refineries out of Switzerland closing down, um, the flights issue, obviously issues happening and, uh, so I feel like, you know, yeah, people do need to prepare. They need to get on top of the food. That's a great thing that you're sharing people to get prepared with that. And, uh, you know, you've got your list of seven and then the eighth point being uh, essentially the being taking care of your finances. Like what I can make a difference in is bringing my tech background, you know, into the blockchain for gold, because here we have the opportunity to basically secure a digital blockchain so that people can hold it and know it's secure in one of, in pretty much the most remote secured city in the world being Perth. And, uh, and so that's, I think that's a really, you know, it's a, it's a really good uh, security strategy to have that there. But, you know, and from what I gather, the people there, they've, they've got their, their food sorted. Like, you know, they think they're having those sort of supply chain issues. And, and like what you're saying, it's different everywhere. Like, you know, and I really do feel for the people in the States because that, that sounds really, it sounds really hairy, everything you're saying. And I spent most of this year actually living in the States, uh, as you know, like uh, living in, uh, in Alabama, actually, with the election coming and seeing what's happening, social unrest. I was like, I need to move. And uh, so because uh, so much of the world was, was in lockdown, I couldn't really get to Australia, couldn't really get to other parts of Asia, et cetera. So coming down to Mexico and finding plentiful food here and coordinating the operation uh, with, the, with the mining team this particular time. And uh, I think we all kind of need to band together for this new world that we want to create. Yeah, I agree. You know, the new, I think, platform moving forward with all these supply chain disruptions is going to be directly from the producer 
to the end buyer with no middle people involved whatsoever. And I think that's going to be the new model and chain of just business in general moving forward, especially since we can verify and validate on the blockchain ownership of a good direct from the producer to the end buyer. Now you're going to need the delivery in there somewhere. You might uh, use, I don't know, registered mail or insured mail, whatever. That's, that's the only thing you're really going to need. So think about the amount of middle fingers getting in the way, charging, overcharging, extra charging, and then just driving up prices. Well, this going directly from a mine, for example, I mean, here in the state, you go to any place online, um, silver either refiners or end sellers, dealers, it could be a wholesale or to individuals like myself buying single ounces of silver. That's all dried up completely. With the Comex now adding, what was it, 62 or 68 different approved silver distributors, and what was it, uh, went up 200% on their gold deliverables approved for the refiners there. Almost every spare ounce of gold across the planet has been bought up into institutional hands. So again, that's that whole centralized system. Now, what if I can go directly to a mine and say, that's mine and there's nobody getting in the way? Uh, I think that's the way it's going to be for purchasing metals moving forward anyway. So... You know, this brings us into a whole new world. We're entering a new world. So we might as well talk about options for possession and buying, selling precious metals in the new world. And here we have the coupling of blockchain as well as uh, delivery and everything in between. So clean gold. You know, I like the idea where you're not using any of the mercury or any kind of the, you know, chemicals that are truly polluting for long term the environment. I know if you spill some gasoline, that'll take a couple of years. Things will come back. But laying mercury across the water table is that that's a long term thing. And, you know, it's well known gold mining mercury is just overused. And, uh, you know, that's why clean. I like the idea of the clean, but I also like the idea of direct ownership on the blockchain directly from the mine. So you start to know the people involved in it and you know exactly where it's coming from. Yeah, we're basically we're able to produce uh, clean, and that's what we're calling it, clean gold uh, over the website, cleangold.io, and as opposed to the dirty gold. And, and so people are, not many people are really aware of what you were just saying about the mercury and the cyanide. People have become familiar with like, you know, the, the blood diamonds, et cetera. But the idea that precious metals also have this toxicity with them, this is going to be new. And, and like most people have no idea that like a, like a gold wedding ring, for example, it has like 20 tons of waste associated with one ring. I'm sure that would shock a lot of people. And so what we're doing here is we're bringing this innovation of this amazing clean technology, uh, this clean mining. Um, that's, that's what we've able to, been able to produce here out of this, this group from the uh, Western Australia. And basically it was developed with the CSIRO, which is the leading scientific body out of Australia. And then um, the team was able to basically purchase that, get a hold of that technology and start innovating and producing uh, this, this clean gold. And as you're saying, it's going to be a direct relationship. So there's no middlemen here. In fact, not only is that going to be removing the, the costs, but because of this, this, just this launch, this one time basically opportunity what we've got here is we're, we're actually launching and uh, financing the mining with a discount. So that's going to be great for, for people stepping forward because if people have been concerned around uh, ownership of gold and perhaps maybe missing out on this jump that we've had this year, like um, with gold being up so much, and, uh, and then on top of that, they had a benefit of it being, you know, the gold supply chain on the blockchain, knowing that they'll be able to move this as a digital asset, as well as redeemable, fully redeemable once the mining is, is fully underway next year. I know a lot of people had a lot of questions instantly listening to that. So these uh, CGTC tokens equal to one gram of gold. So each token is a gram of gold. So on the physical side, that's one thing. And on the digital side, on the other thing. So right away, I know this, this half of the people are going to go, can I buy the digitized tokens? Can I hold them and can I resell them to somebody? And they're just going to want to trade it. They're going to want to roll it as you see through exchanges or maybe through wallets and they're going to try to cross swap and they're just going to hold it and see if they can, you know, make a little money. If the price of gold goes from 2000 to 4,000, great. What's my token worth now? And will somebody else buy it? But then there's other people like me who are going to like, Whoa, that's great. I want to, I'm going to hold it until you come under uh, some sort of production. And then eventually I'm going to take it physical delivery, because I really believe in a year from now, price of gold, are you kidding me? It's going to be much higher than today. That's common sense. That's not a financial forecast and that's not financial advice. That's called common sense on how much money is being printed. Trillions of dollars per month coming out of the Fed just in the United States, not to mention the European central banks or any other banking facilities around there that are the central banks are going insane with the money printing. 
So if I want to take physical good delivery, how long is it going to take me to get a, a gram or an ounce or ounces versus grams? You know, I'm always in this kilograms versus pounds thing. Number of grams in an, in an ounce. So gold, the price of gold is always actually set um, around the world at, at the ounce, even though so much of the world is now in metric. And so what you do is you take the, uh, the, the ounce gold price of, of today, which is the spot price that's always moving, uh, or you could go with the uh, LMBA, the London um, PM fixed price at the end of every day over there, they, they have the price there. So either of those, the spot price, that's how many grams there are in an, in an ounce. And that gives you, so the tokenization of the clean gold that we're calling CGTC, that's the, uh, the little ticker symbol there that we've got for that. Uh, that's, that's what you do. So you divide the 28.3495 number of grams into the ounce. That gives you the, uh, the, per, the, per ounce, the per gram price. And you can go to cleangold.io on the website. It's got a calculator. You can just type that in and see how much you want to get. And it gives you the, uh, it can give you a discount there as well. So basically that, that tells you, how much, you know, what you're going to be getting uh, for that. Yeah, it does. I don't understand the discount though, because right now there's a premium on selling ounces at the retail level where if I wanted to, let's say I'm going to talk silver for a second. We can talk gold as well. So you get the, the $1 Liberty or the $20 Eagle on the face value. There's premiums all over the planet. You know, you're paying absurd amounts of premium to even get a hold of that piece of physical metal in your hand. So how are you able to even offer something at a discount when the rest of the world's charging excess on premiums to get physical? That's because what we were saying before, where we're actually going direct to the mine. So basically this is a mining operation where we're financing the mining operation out of Western Australia. And, and I'm heading up um, as the, the whole blockchain initiative, the whole technology initiative, because that, that's my background. So I'm the CEO of, of that operation there. And my partners from the mines, we've basically been able to do a deal where I've been able to, we've been able to basically secure this, this discount. And I know it sort of sounds strange, but when you look at the actual cost of production that they're able to do from the mine, you can see there's a margin there. That's why they're doing it. There's a business here. There's a business in actually doing mining and it's profitable. And it's actually with the jump that's happened this year, it's so profitable that we're able to give this discount to people. And so, and along with that, if you've been to any of the, and obviously many people have, they've been to many of the, the gold websites, the silver, silver precious metals websites. It's very confusing with so many different products there as you were saying. Here, it's just gold. It's just the spams of gold. And for this, basically, this one time only, like we're going we're gonna to sell out of this so that we can really get the speed up the mining. The mining's already underway. We're just going to fast track it so that we can get into production and, and get people their gold. Yeah, describe to me gold. So if you're talking about taking physical delivery of the gold, what's it going to look like in my hand, this amount of one ounce gold that you're you're just, you're talking about here because you, there are so many different kind of mints and refiners out there and they stamp their own and every day, there's probably like a thousand different designs out on the coins and whatever. So what we're doing, the, the actual, at the moment, the, the minimum delivery is going to be uh, 50 grams. And so that's not quite um, two ounces. So that's going to be a, we're, we've actually already done the production. When you go to the website, the cleangold.io, you can see the design, you can see the gold coin. They're actually going into, uh, we have a small production run going at the moment to produce those because as I was saying, the mining has already begun, but the full scale operation will be over the next 12 months. So what you'll have in your hand will be this beautifully designed physical coin, 50 grams. And, uh, and so how many of those 50 gram allotments that you have, that's how many, but because this is also tokenized and, and divisible, per gram and even below just one gram because it's going to be a divisible unit, then uh, that's how you can, you can move it around digitally or you can redeem it for that full physical gold coin, 50 grams. Now, compared to some of the other, um, there are other gold tokenized products out in the marketplace, but when you look at what they require for being for redemption, what's been happening in the marketplace and the availability around gold because it's not allocated with those other gold platforms. Are you really sure that you've actually got the gold? Whereas here, because we're going direct to the mine, uh, that's how you're securing your gold allocated to you. So am I able to take that 50 grand piece and then have it divided in to smaller 225 gram coins or is it strictly a 50 gram delivery and the tokenized asset is the one that can be fractionalized out and traded amongst people, but the physical delivery needs to be a 50 gram coin of physical in the hand. Am I getting this right or am I not? 
At the moment, yes, you've got that right. That's how it is right now. Um, you know, w this is a launch. We're, we're pushing things out there. This is a new product, and we're going we're open for feedback. Uh, so that's that's what we've been able to uh, allocate and uh, set up our logistics for that that production with the fifty gram coin. But you know, over this next year, you know, we want to hear feedback from people. And uh, but you're right. That's how it is right now. Yeah. So what's the proven reserves in this mine? So how much? length of time in production are you looking at? Five years, 10 years, 100 years? Or what's the actual proven reserves there in ounces per ton of ore that's in the, in the region that the mine controls with the, with the rights there on that plot? So this, uh, the mining operation out of Western Australia, our, our partner there, that we're, it's, they're called New Fortune. All of this information is in our white paper and on the website. So you can go to the website, clingle.io, you can read about the mining operation. And the first mine that is going to be under production is called Radio Gold Mine. You can look this up. Uh, and and that's the, there's actually four mines and there's more coming. So this is going to be an ongoing operation. This is not even just one mine. But very interestingly, when you look into the history, and anybody can look up the history of the Radio Gold Mine, it was actually the richest privately owned gold mine in, in Australian history. And so 100 years ago, that's when they first started um, mining there and they were producing vast amounts of gold with um, basically the, the most recent, uh, the, the Jork Report, which is actually a, it's a, it's a, a geological report that comes out of Australia, the Jork Report, J-O-R-C, that basically is, uh, has shown that there's uh, 28,600 ounces. Um, that's on the report. And uh, the most recent geological reports are showing indications of actually just on this one mine six times that amount. And so that's what's in the radio, let alone the other mines that are already um, owned and the other ones that will come into production because basically uh, the team is constantly finding new new reserves to tap into. But this one alone uh, is enough to basically get everybody their gold. That's what we're selling in this allocation. And so when we take the 28,600 ounces on the Jork report, and we turn that into grams, we get 810,810 grams. And so we're selling, that's the, that's the allotment, we're selling actually 600,000 grams of that in this, uh, in this first allotment. And so we've actually got, this is like roughly not even like 20% of the reserves on this one mine. So that's how we're seeing this. London Metals Exchange, you're talking about to the COMEX or whatnot in the United States. Uh, they're taking the largest physical deliveries ever recorded. And you and I, as an individual, we're kind of just less than scraps now where the institutional buyers have jumped in and are buying one ounce coins out of places that you and I go online and buy one ounce coins or half ounce coins for gold, for example, quarter ounce gold rounds. Institutions are picking this up through central banks now. So it seems that the world's supply of metals is being hoovered up at the moment. And, you know, I have my own uh, indication as to why that is with resets and, and never ending money printing, hyperinflation, et cetera. But for an individual now moving forward into the future, especially year, maybe even further out from that point now, it's going to be more and more and more difficult for you to lay as an individual, your hands on physical metals. So I like the idea of going directly to a mine where even if the institutions are out there buying everything, uh, on the delivery side and taking delivery, you talked about 400 ounce gold bars there. That was the regular traditional delivery size, but they couldn't even facilitate that any longer. So they're like, all right, we'll break it down. Maybe we'll give you two 100 ounce bars. We'll chip you off a couple 50 ounce bars. We'll throw in some five ounce bars and the rest in ones. As long as it equals 400, consider delivered. That was so shocking that they couldn't get 400 ounce bars. We've gone from 400 ounce standard bars for the last 100 years into just a hodgepodge of whatever equals 400 ounces in the last year. So moving forward, to get it is going to be something that will have value in itself. Now, I don't know if you're thinking along the same lines there, what you've heard about that, but that's just my own personal feeling about, you know, it was kind of like the hand sanitizer and whatnot in the beginning of this whole um, you know, panic thing. People would pay anything to get it. And especially since it's sound money, that's going to be reset. And I mean, this is a way to protect generational wealth is by having physical gold or physical silver in your possession. You know, having a thing, a hand sanitizer is a dollar 29 that people would pay 20 US dollars to get out of that kind of like, I need it. 
What do you think is going to happen with gold and silver when the prices really start to move and they start to reset currencies, fiat currencies, based on sound money again? Ooh, to have your fingers to be able to actually take delivery of something is going to be, that's going to have its own set of value chain inside there as well. It really is, Dave. That's going to be a, a big issue. So that's why, once again, uh, we wanted to go direct to the mining operation and out of one of the most richest gold mining fields in the world, uh, out of Western Australia, has a proven history over the more than 100 years of one of the richest gold reserves there. And uh, so, you know, basically being able to get people directly into gold and make it such that, you know, they could have redemption of it, redeem it, get it into their hand if they wanted to, or also have it secured in a vault, full, a fully maximum security facility and use the digital, as you were saying, so basically be able to trade it amongst themselves and amongst the clean gold owners there. That's how, we, that's how we're setting this up. And so, yeah, I, I do have a vision that, you know, it's going to get harder and harder to buy gold and the penny hasn't really dropped out in the rest of the world yet on this. And then I think, you know, maybe they're wanting to keep it like that. As you're saying, they're hoovering up the gold, the institutions, et cetera. Maybe they're not wanting to make it, you know, have a run on that yet, even though many people are, are waking up to it. But they haven't really fully realized yet that, you know, a lot of the gold owned is paper gold in the world, essentially, you know, from you're saying like with Comex, et cetera. And um, is it really there? Do they really have that gold? And what's going to happen when people actually realize that, that maybe they don't? What's that going to do to the price of gold? And if you've been able to secure it out of the richest gold mining fields in, Australia, in, in the world, basically, uh, and, uh, and have the, the gold direct from the mine, you know, wow, where's that price going to be in a year? So, yeah, we're taking this as a not only are you getting this discount now, but looking at this 12 months and beyond because this mining operation is just going to keep on expanding. We want to have more clean mining. We want to basically clean up the whole industry. Um, but there's enough gold reserves in Western Australia to basically take care of a, a lot of the people, especially your listeners. Yeah, and since it is blockchain based, you guys, you all are running ERC twenty. You know, people can access that through MetaMask or My Ether Wallet. Can they keep it on a ledger? Well, I guess you could if you're going to access through My Ether Wallet. You could keep it on your ledger. You'll be able to securely store it because my whole thing is, if you don't know the private keys and you're not holding something on a cold wallet, you don't really own it. If it's in an exchange or held by others, you don't own it. Absolutely. So you'll be able to hold this in your Ethereum wallet. Let's say over at my Ether wallet, you know, you can secure it into your ledger, um, where wallet that you have, uh, your Trezor wallet, etc. So you'll be able to store it. Uh, and but even if you were just storing it, let's say directly in my Ether wallet, making it super easy, we're going to be putting up a lot of videos for people to show them exactly how to do this. Uh, so to make it really easy. Because a lot of people, you know, there could be people who, here who they know about gold, but maybe they don't know about crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain. And so this is going to be a way for them to take, to get some exposure, some, uh, some skills basically in holding a digital asset and, and basically storing it in a digital wallet. And then vice versa for those people who are familiar with those digital wallets, what's it going to be like for them to be able to um, basically take possession of a physical product? Because most... Uh, you know, most tokens out there, most digital assets, they're not actually backed up by something. This is a one-to-one -one relationship per token, per CGTC token equals one gram of physical gold from the mine. And uh, so that's what we're going to be delivering to people. So I know for sure with the KYC, that's a know your customer and the anti-money laundering, the AML side of things. You know, to register for it, do I, I need to go through all the KYC AML and then what's my minimum buy-in? Am I able to buy like five grams of, of gold and digitize that or do I have to buy the full 50 gram piece or can I buy five grams and then hold on to it and use that as a tradable and then eventually if I work my way up to 50, 50 grams, I can take delivery of the coin then? Is, is that how that works? I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm still a novice in this whole thing too with a the swap over between the metals and the, and the crypto. I'm looking at the minimal amounts. A lot of people are, they're like, hey, I'd like to try, but I don't know what the minimum is. But then again, I would love to take the delivery of the physical piece of metal as well. I live in both worlds, sure. I guess. Yeah, so it's gonna be really easy for people to, to register and come on here. You just click the create the account over at cleangold.io. And uh, the minimum purchase is gonna be uh, 1,000 US dollars. It basically, it's 16 grams, 16 tokens of the CGTC. Uh, you will basically enter your name, your email, uh, the country where you are, uh, who you've referred, who's referred you to this, who you've heard this from. So in this case, you, know, you can type in ADAPT2030 and uh, put your password in, press submit, 
that gets you in. We're going to have a web, we're going to have a video as well, walking you through that process. Um, but it's as simple as that. When you log in, though, the next step is you just have to answer a few questions for compliance reasons. And yet we are being fully compliant with this uh, with this offering. These days, having to you know work with KYC, know your customer. AML, anti-monetary laundering. So we just have to ask people a few questions like, have they held gold uh, previously? Have they, have they, do they work with gold? Are they a sophisticated investor? We need to check off on these. They're so just asking you these couple of questions to validate you. And then after that, basically you uploading your identity check. So essentially, uh, you know, your passport or your driver's license, and that validates you. That process then enables you to purchase. So that's going to be basically the process of onboarding yourself in the system. But this is a there's a lot of intensity happening in the world, and we, we want to just deal with you know good quality people who are basically want to uh, get some gold, hold it, and and see themselves through this transition period, whatever that's going to bring to everybody over this uh, this next twelve months and beyond. So you know, knowing about some exchanges, uh, what exchange could I find? the token on? Is it going to be listed on an exchange or if I'm going to find a daily price, if I actually want to follow it, you know, like you can do anything with simple example, Bitcoin, I know exactly what the price is. I know the exchanges where it can be found. So what about this? Well, there, where can I find the information on a daily if I want to follow the price on it? Uh, at the beginning, you'll need to come to the website, but essentially the price is going to be tracking the price of gold because every token, uh, every CGTC uh, digital certificate. So that's what they're, that's what that's how we're we're bringing them to market as a digital certificate. Um, this CGTC, they will be equal to one gram of gold, and so that means that you just um, you can just divide the, the the number the price per ounce of gold by the twenty eight point three four nine five yourself. That's going to tell you the price, or um, that's the value price position. Or you can just go to the the Glen Gold website. And I'm sure that you know people who there's going to be other people who are going to miss out on this first offering uh, at this discounted rate, and others are going to want to come in and be able to pick those up. And and that's just within our own offering here. That doesn't take into account, let's say, uh, decentralized exchanges out there where people can trade, you know, freely between each other, like with something like Uniswap. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but there are there are there are these new decentralized exchanges with a lot of liquidity that people can just participate without any gatekeepers at all. And so that's very interesting. There's a lot of uh, innovation happening in this whole space that's going to bring a lot of transparency, a lot of openness, a lot of connectivity between each other. Uh, and we're really excited about all of that. Oh, that sounds all good. So what's, what's the protocol or what's the procedure if I want to say, all right, you know what? It's time for me to cash in. I want to take my physical gold into my hand. I live in the United States. You all are mining down in Australia. How am I supposed to get that through you know, shipping, customs, delivery. I, I just don't know how that works either to get gold from one country to another. Cause I know if you try to take it through an airport, oh, they ask many, many, many a question. So if I want to take the physical delivery now, I'm ready. Uh, walk me through that whole step A to Z on how to get it from Australia into, for me, living in the United States here. Which is one of the, the most premier ones uh, with Molka Amit. So basically, we're partnering up with some of the best logistical uh, companies in the world, and uh, we've got our, our connectivity out of Singapore as well. So it's, the operation is between Australia with the mining operation and, uh, and also with Singapore, and then there'll be the shipments. There's, you know, there is gold shipments happening again. It, it is moving. So that's what our expectation is, that you know, by next year, you'll be able to have a, have a security shipment from either Australia or Singapore over to you, and, uh, and so we'll be keeping people posted on exactly the steps on how to do that. And so, however, that if we had to, if there were any logistical issues, like if the world was peculiar next year, we'll also have other relationships with other operators, like other um, gold dealers in the US. So you'll be, they'll be able to be trading between them. So that's how you could also take possession. We'll have all that clearly explained, um, but that, that's that's, of maximum importance to us because we know the redemption is key. And as I was saying, you know, have lowering that bar down for the redemption on a, on a digitized product of, to just um, the 50 grams and not the, not the 400 ounces. We know that people are going to want to want to take that. And also with the minimum of like a thousand dollars coming in, it's going to be important that people can step in and take that redemption. And so we're going to make it super simple for people so they can do that. And uh, so basically stay tuned as we, as we roll this out. But as I was saying, our partners are some of the, the, the top operators in the whole space. And that's how you're going to be able to get the redemption. It's just the, the world we're moving into. 
as you can see, almost the, the moves being broadcast, there's going to be a resetting currency on the fiat side. So speaking of digitization, you know, the United Nations wants to digitize natural resources, give them a dollar value based on the new dollar or the new whatever reserve world currency that's going to be set up tokenize a forest, for example, put a dollar value to it, and then allow countries to issue their own uh, tokens, Fed coins, whatever you like to call it, based on the natural resources. But inside that whole play or movement is going to be metals as well. It's going to be, um, I say, a combination of different assets to allow nations to start back up with some value to print and push their own new fiats with the new valuation on it. But it's going to Bring us back sort of old school, I guess, to metals and natural resources. And I'm, I'm sure the labor pool will be put in there somewhere as well. But you're going to get that whole new basket of something to allow a currency to reset in a nation. And I'm certainly looking to the future of this new reset using metals as well. Because I think uh, by doing that, there's a great upside to it. But again, it's not financial advice. It's looking at the last 4,000 years of history and how money has worked or not worked. So even going back to the Roman era where they debased their currency by adding more tin into the silver to pay their people, same thing. doesn't matter if you're adding metal to bogus metal to metal or just printing off a printing press. Whatever happens is all coming back. It's got to reset somewhere. And it seems like we are kind of at that great reset point in history right now anyway. With all these cycles overlapping, we got the grand solar minimum cycle overlapping either on a 400-year a 2,000 year or a 3,600 year civilization reset along with uh, the, the fourth turning, you know, that whole 80 year cycles within five of those cycles equals a grand solar minimum. So wherever you look, you're, you're looking at civilization cycle, economic cycles, um, and solar cycles and turning cycles themselves. So we're at a very interesting point in history and I just don't see how our current financial system can even work further, all based on debt when nobody's working and so many things have gone to zero and they're not coming back in terms of business. So reset is, at least in my opinion, over the last 4,000 years of historical precedent of money coming and going, countries and superpowers coming and going, we're going to see something new begin here as the old exit stage left starting right now. And Barnaby, I appreciate your time. Any closing thoughts here? I'm really grateful to be able to come and speak to you about this to your listeners. Uh, I'm totally in alignment with everything you've just been saying. Uh, that's why we're essentially doing this. Like I've been uh, prepping myself and uh, basically building up this team so we can bring something to market at precisely the time when we need it to give people the access to essentially uh, a digitized gold that they'll be able to use so, so they can have something to fall back on. We need to give people like a, a bit of a safety net here at this time and we're going to create this interoperability with the existing markets so that as this shift happens, people are going to be able to make use of this uh, both as a physical and also as a digitized asset over here. And let's not forget the clean aspect. And so this, we're very excited about how we can also transition and move a whole industry into clean technology. We, we want to basically end the pollution that's going on uh, from one of the most hazardous industries in the world. So that's the closing goal. I'm really excited about the, the whole operation. And I thank everybody for watching out there. Uh, everything that we talked about today, I'll leave in the description box below, all the links to the white papers. There's three different white papers out there. There's a short one, there's a slide deck, uh, there's a medium range, and then we have the long one, a full 67 pages if you want to peruse through. I'm one of those guys that I love to read white papers, so I do the whole thing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.